So I got in pretty heavy into dabbing. School was a a past responsibility for me. I completely just gave up on school. I somehow scraped by and graduated. And then came the summer of 2017. Um, that was when I was free range to do whatever I want. So I dabbed and I dabbed and um, did all stupid things with hot box. So I locked myself in a car with my friend and we'd smoke it up. So like you couldn't breathe in it besides marijuana. That's something really common. And you know, I would get high daily. I couldn't sleep without it. And it took from one dab to feel something. So started taking two or three to feel the same effect. You know, that standard tolerance building that you hear from. Um, it wasn't, and this is when it started really becoming a problem because it got expensive. As you get $30 for about a couple grams of shatter and then you go through about a gram a day it starts, you know, you're spending hundreds of dollars a week. And of course, me and my friend stole money from my mom. Uh, We started selling our belongings. We, he started robbing from our friends and we, we would do anything we could just to get high. And we were so oblivious to what we were doing. We still thought it was just weed. We could quit whenever we want. It's whatever. Um, And all was, all was good until I was sitting down on the couch. I just got done dabbing and I hear my mom and she yells my name at the top of her lungs. She goes, Ethan, super loud. And none of my friends heard it. So I'm like, I get up and I'm like, oh, okay, let me go check that out. And they're all confused. And I run upstairs and she's asleep. So she never even called my name. So I was hearing hearing her voice and I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, well, that was odd. I could have sworn she just yelled my name, but didn't think anything of it. So I went back and smoked again. And this time I was hearing the sound of the crunching of food. So like cat food, that kind of crunching sound that they make when they eat so oddly specific, but I was hearing that and I had four cats, so I didn't think anything weird. It just kind of was like white noise. But then I look over to the food bowl and there's no cats eating. And the the sound of the food gets louder as I look at the food bowl. And it's like this crunching sound that encompasses my head. And I start kind of grabbing my head and like shaking and going crazy. And I told everybody, get out, get out of my house, go get out. They're like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know, just get out. Um, And at the time, my best friend Kari lived with me. And he was like, dude, you're just token out. You're having a bad trip. So I stopped doing that or I stopped for like a couple of days for my head to clear up a little bit. And then um, things started to get bad again. I started, every time I smoked, I'd get paranoid. I'd get suspicious of Kari and about his uh, intentions and about what he's doing. And it turns out some of those suspicions were correct, but we'll get to that. But I remember I started, at the time I didn't know what was going on, but I started getting obsessed with inanimate objects. I started thinking that this green towel that's hanging on my railing that symbolizes something and the universe is trying to tell me something why is this towel green i have to get to the bottom of it i have to figure out so i'm spending all of my this whole day then the next couple of days like researching the color green or getting obsessed with like what why is this towel green and very bizarre fixations and then then went from a green towel to a white lighter and it went from just random objects and I would obsess over him over them and I would pull my hair out trying to like figure out what they all meant and how they all connected to each other and my friend at the time was like well you better get to the bottom of it and I don't think he was realized he was feeding my delusion there so I got that really because I was like, oh my gosh he he gets it he's I got to figure it out before he does kind of thing and that was that. And, and that's not even the worst part. So I continue to go back to smoking, smoking weed because I didn't put two and two together. I didn't realize that the weed was causing this because it was happening while I was sober as well. So I thought this is just odd and it's, but it's not the weed. And I remember feeling a snap in my brain. Like it literally felt like something like it snapped all of a sudden 
my sanity was just altered. I was started hearing voices, having conversations in my head. Um, converse, I was having conversations with family members and friends and I was getting in arguments with them. I was fighting with them in my head and having full blown conversations about random topics. And it was really bizarre. And at the time, my mom kind of brushed it off as anxiety because she didn't know what was going on. I'm like, mom, this is not anxiety. There's something going on with me. Um, then I call that day D day. Cause that was kind of the turning point. That was when my psych psychosis officially begun. Um, and the very next day I had to go to work and I go in and I worked at this factory assembly line just for a summer job, just to get some ca extra cash. And, um, I'm starting to assemble these pieces and I get these voices in my head like, you're doing it wrong or stop doing that. Stop doing that. You're messed. You know, just bombard me with these voices in my head and I just could not focus on work. So I went up to my boss and I quit. I quit that day and I was like, I can't work. I don't know what's going on with me. I can't work. I can't focus. And that basically began the most terrifying couple of months of my life. So I started, obviously I stopped smoking. That was the first thing. So that's what was interesting because my psychosis didn't go away for like two months, even when I stopped smoking weed. The worst thing for me by far was mixing dreams with reality. So it's so hard to explain when you're in a stable mind, but basically I couldn't distinguish from what was real and what I just dreamt of. There'd be moments where um, I'd be hanging out with my friends. I'd be like, hey, remember when we did this? And they'd be like, what are you talking about? And it was then I realized it was a dream I had. And that happened quite a bit. And sometimes I thought the dreams meant something. I thought, you know, I had this really bizarre one because Kari was known for stealing stuff, stole my, my mom's cameras, stole all this stuff. And I, I'd have dreams of me finding it in particular drawers and I'd run around the house opening those drawers when I woke up. And of course it's not there, but I always, that was a, a theme of, cause was thinking the universe was telling me things. Um, and another thing I got, I was super paranoid and suspicious of other people. Uh, I was shopping at King supers and the receipt was printing out. And the lady next to me was kind of looking at the receipt, uh, printing out and I got, and I snatched it really quick. And then she kind of looked at me like, okay, but I thought if she took that receipt, she would have information about me. And I thought she, like, she would know, like, if she took that receipt, she would know about me, whatever that meant. Like she would, it was weird. And, um, when I was driving home, I would always go in circles to make sure nobody was tailing me. And yeah, I lived like that for about two months and it was the worst experience of my life. And to get out of it, I basically st stayed abstinent, which was the main part, but I also took fish oil, started exercising, eating better. And I not saying it cured it, but it, for me, I like to think that it did help. Um, I started seeing therapy, walk in therapy because I knew something was wrong. That was one thing that distinguishes mine from a lot of cases is I had a lot of insight. Like I, I had some delusions and I had some hallucinations, but I knew something was off the entire time. I knew I was like, that's something's not right. I pretty much stayed abstinent for five years. I had a slip up about a year ago. Um, I was kind of testing how my brain was doing. I know that sounds stupid, but I was like, if I smoke right now and I just have a good time and I feel fine, that means I've healed, right? That means I, that was my logic. I was like, that means I'm better. That means nothing. Um, I'm not going to smoke all I want, but it was just kind of just out of curiosity. So I just took a little joint, couple puffs and instantly I got paranoid I got super suspicious, even just off of marijuana, uh, even just off of flour now. And that was years after my psychosis and instantly paranoid, instantly suspicious of others around me. So I stopped doing it. That was my 
official last time a year ago, but I took a four year gap and then smoked and then another one year gap now. Um, and I thought that was it. I thought that was a closed chapter and it was in my past. It was behind me. I can move on. Oh, little did I know it would come and bite me in the butt a couple months ago. And I didn't start smoking again, but I kind of questioned my mental health. I was like, you know what, what I'm kind of feeling off. What did happen to me during that one summer? What was that? I was like, what, what was I feeling? Like, was that caused by cannabis? Like, what did I go through? So I started looking into it and cannabis induced psychosis. And that's where I found these groups. But before I found the good stuff, I found all the bad stuff. And that was things, articles about prognosis for cannabis induced psychosis and the outlook for patients who go through it, you know, even without a history of mental illness, you know, 40% of people who go through an episode develop chronic illness and develop schizophrenia. Um, And the fact that it can change the structure of your brain, the brain chemistry, if you smoke before you're 25, all this stuff. And so I started obsessively researching like, how do I recover my brain? How do I bounce back? You know, is the damage already done? Um, is my IQ lowered for good? Is, you know, is my brain doomed? And I was so obsessed with those thoughts that, and I didn't like the chance of becoming schizophrenic. I didn't like that 50% chance at all. So I actually had a suicide attempt on this last November. I was driving and I, closed my eyes and I almost swerved into the the media next to me, but then I kind of snapped out of it. I was like, what am I doing? But luckily I'm right here. Uh, I think my story was an exception. I know afterwards I had that hospitalization, but that was more because of my own anxiety about, the aftermath and if I'm going to get schizophrenia or if I'm going to, if it's going to come back, but, you know, I stayed abstinent and there's no reason for me to believe it's going to come back if I don't smoke. And I know there's still that risk, but, you know, I'm doing fine now. That's all you can, all you can do. You can thank the stars above that you're, you're one of the lucky ones. And um, the fact that, kids are going through this kind of breaks my heart and it just makes you realize like recovery is possible. It is.